What is peripheral neuropathy? A production of GoodHealthTube.com. Before we discuss what is neuropathy, it is important to understand that there are two major classifications of neuropathy, central neuropathy and peripheral neuropathy. Both types of neuropathy involve nerve damage. Most people are referring to peripheral neuropathy when discussing the topic of neuropathy in general. Later in this video, we will discuss the importance of getting peripheral neuropathy diagnosed properly because the sooner peripheral neuropathy is diagnosed, the more effective treatment can be. Peripheral neuropathy is damaged or diseased nerves that exist outside of the central nervous system. The central nervous system is the brain and spinal cord. All other nerves are considered to be peripheral to the central nervous system, hence the term peripheral nervous system. Peripheral neuropathy affects motor function, sensory function and autonomic function. These three types of peripheral neuropathy all involve nerve damage and will be discussed in this video. Central neuropathy is disease to the nerves of the spinal cord and brain. Neurological disorders such as Parkinson's disease, multiple sclerosis, and epilepsy are examples of central neuropathies. The remainder of this video will deal with peripheral neuropathy, or disease of the peripheral nervous system. There are indeed several causes of peripheral neuropathy. The peripheral nervous system sends information from the central nervous system to the remainder of the body for motor function. The peripheral sensory nerves also send sensory or incoming signals to the central nervous system. Sensory neuropathy is damage to the sensory nerves that send signals to the central nervous system. Motor neuropathy is when the nervous system has trouble sending signals to the muscles, resulting in muscle weakness. Additionally, another type of peripheral neuropathy is nerve damage to the autonomic nerves. Autonomic nerves control automatic functions of the body such as digestion, urination, and blood pressure control. This can result in other symptoms of peripheral neuropathy that are not typically known to be associated with peripheral neuropathy such as bladder function symptoms, low blood pressure, and a labile heart rate. When we give a thumbs up sign, our brain and spinal cord send the signal to our thumb through peripheral nerves. Similarly, when we touch a hot stove and pull back, the peripheral nerves in our fingers send a signal that gets transmitted through our peripheral nerves to our central nervous system causing us to withdraw from the hot stove. This withdrawal of course is a good process as it prevents us from burning our fingers. Peripheral nerves can be damaged from trauma, infections, metabolic abnormalities, and toxins, poisons. Some of these toxins include drugs to treat cancer. Peripheral neuropathy may be mild but sometimes, the nerve damage can be severe. It's difficult to predict the severity of disease as peripheral neuropathy varies from individual to individual. There are certain autoimmune diseases such as lupus, and rheumatoid arthritis that can cause peripheral neuropathy. There is an association of chronic liver disease and peripheral neuropathy. Certain infections and vaccines can trigger the immune system to cause an inflammation response to cause peripheral nerve damage that can result in potentially serious complications and even death. While peripheral neuropathy may have several causes, peripheral neuropathy always results in nerve damage. Examples of different types of peripheral neuropathies. An example of a traumatic peripheral neuropathy is carpal tunnel syndrome in which there is physical injury to a single nerve in the wrist as a result of repetitive microtrauma from a repetitive motion. Carpal tunnel syndrome can be treated in a number of ways such as rest, steroid injections, and surgery. Examples of a toxic exposure that causes peripheral neuropathy is exposure to lead, mercury, or arsenic. An example of an infectious cause of peripheral neuropathy is shingles which is a reactivation of the herpes zoster virus, otherwise known as the chickenpox virus. An example of neuropathy from metabolic disorders are vitamin deficiencies. One of the more common vitamin deficiencies is a lack of vitamin B12. But the most common cause of neuropathy from a metabolic perspective is diabetes. Diabetes is the inability to regulate blood sugar levels secondary to abnormalities of insulin. High blood sugar levels can affect nerves and cause damage to the small blood vessels known as capillaries which supply oxygen and blood to our small nerves. As a result of this damage, diabetics are prone to peripheral neuropathy, otherwise known as diabetic neuropathy. Diabetic neuropathy cannot be reversed. It results in permanent nerve damage. 
Getting regular blood tests to monitor blood sugar is of paramount importance. The symptoms of peripheral neuropathy are typically muscle weakness and pain. The early symptoms often include numbness and tingling. The pain, otherwise known as neuropathic pain, is typically described as stabbing, stinging, or burning. In many situations, symptoms improve, especially if they are caused by an illness that is treatable such as a vitamin or mineral deficiency. Sometimes, however the nerve damage is permanent, and the resulting peripheral neuropathy symptoms can only be controlled and not cured. This is why it is of vital importance of getting neuropathy diagnosed as soon as possible. Doctors may use a muscle and nerve ultrasound machine to assess damage to the muscle and nerve tissue. Nerve conduction studies are also used, and a nerve biopsy is sometimes required to diagnose peripheral neuropathy if the nerve injury can't be detected by other means. Several medications can relieve pain associated with peripheral neuropathy as well. Another method of peripheral neuropathy treatment is transcutaneous electrical nerve stimulation. We discuss how to alleviate peripheral neuropathy in other videos. The discovery of a certain enzyme involved in peripheral neuropathy has also led to unique approaches in dealing with neuropathic pain. Let's quickly recap the contents of this video. Central neuropathy refers to damaged or diseased nerves of the brain and spinal cord. Peripheral neuropathy refers to damaged or diseased nerves outside of the brain and spinal cord. The causes of peripheral neuropathy include trauma, infections, metabolic abnormalities, and toxins, poisons. Autoimmune disorders can also cause peripheral neuropathy as the immune system is triggered to cause inflammation. The common pathway to all causes is nerve damage. There are essentially three types of peripheral neuropathies. Sensory neuropathy, motor neuropathy, and autonomic neuropathy. The sensory symptoms of peripheral neuropathy are abnormal sensations which sometimes yield pain signals. The nerves affected can cause chronic pain and severe pain. The pain associated with peripheral neuropathy is typically described as stabbing, burning, or tingling. These are sensory neuropathy symptoms. Motor neuropathy symptoms include muscle weakness and fatigue. These motor symptoms from damage to certain types of peripheral neuropathy can be treated and reversed. Others can be treated with medications known as neuropathic pain agents to alleviate the symptoms. Sometimes however the nerve tissue damage or muscle weakness is permanent. Autonomic neuropathy can cause other symptoms such as low blood pressure and a labile heart rate. These so-called symptoms of cardiovascular autonomic neuropathy involve damage of the autonomic nerve function and can result in dizziness and fainting spells. Diabetes is the most common cause of neuropathy, and controlling one's blood sugar can decrease the incidence of nerve pain by improving nerve health. Certain types of peripheral neuropathy can be treated and reversed. Others can be treated with medications known as neuropathic pain agents to alleviate the symptoms. Sometimes however the nerve tissue damage or muscle weakness is permanent. See our description or pinned comment below to find out more about peripheral neuropathy and what options are available to you when dealing with the symptoms of peripheral neuropathy, in particular neuropathic pain. The recent discovery of an enzyme may change everything when it comes to dealing with peripheral neuropathy. Please like, subscribe, and comment. More valuable videos such as this are in the pipeline, which you can watch in our neuropathy playlist. Hit the notification bell to be notified when more videos become available. You are watching a production of GoodHealthTube.com. Thank you for watching.